So here we go. This is the last four modules that have to go back into the AGC. The two, how do you call these? The raceable drivers. The raceable drivers that were all tested good. Mm -hmm. right. The heavily doctored <laughs> current switch module that has been revived from the dead three times. And then the erasable memory module B12, uh, which also caused us all kind of anguish and trouble and still has the fault in it. But we think we can work our way around it. So if those go in, then the AGC will be called totally repaired. Mm -hmm. Guys, we're working so fast, I missed your insertions. But we have our module all back in the AGC. It's fully loaded. Well, it's got heavier. <laughs> <laughs> come on, come on, it's a lightweight machine, as you know. So before we go any further, I need to make a temporary modification where I put a load across the bits that bad, right? So we don't shoot an open wire. And that's for a temporary experiment. We want to drop, the con well, we want to dump all the content of the memory. Then we'll do the fix in the second step. Okay. Temporary and this one, right? Okay, so our temporary fixed is wire wrapped in. So Mike is going to attempt to read the memory as is. We know it has a broken bit. And uh, once we have the content archived, we will work around the broken bit. Because the memory it retains its bit forever, so we can read, read them. So, there are some of these registers that we don't care as much about their contents, like the interrupt temporary storage registers. Mm -hmm. So I think what I'm going to do is just manually read those first. Right. So, read preset from this one is 10. Okay, I got 4, 0, 0, 0, 2. Read again. Where, where, where's, the, where's the result? Up here, in G and W. So this, this, this row of lights? Yeah. So we didn't read zero, which is a good sign. That's a good sign. Okay. So I'm just going to read the next address and make sure we get something different. That's L or up. Let's read preset for this one. Yep. Sure, that's something different. Okay. So should I just do the dump? It's really up to you. I mean, it's either going to work or not work, right? You have one, one shot at it. Right. So just keep, keep walking up a little bit? I would say so, if you can. Yeah. Particularly if we get one where uh, bit 60 is zero. Yeah, we, so then we... And then we see, see the second see, time we read it. Right, see if it changes. That would be an interesting experiment. Q up to is at 12. Read. Preset. Ah, good. That'll be approved now if you this, read it again. This is a good value for QRUPT because this is pointing into some bank of fixed memory. Alright, so we're, we're reading QD. real memory? Yep. Yeah, yeah. And then I'm going to do another read on this. Yeah. And that bit is set. Bingo. Yeah, right. Yes. <laughs> so okay. that's what we expect. <laughs> okay, so I say you dump, 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 dump it, right? Yeah. Okay. Alright, three, two, one. That was it. You, you yeah. lit to about 2.07 or 2.08. Which is normal. Yeah. Okay, so, wow, that's a lot of progress. Yeah, but it improves out all the memory access circuitry, right? Yeah. It seems like it works really well, though. Okay, well, that's a wire shot that's reading memory. Now it's screwed up all the bit <laughs> 15. Yep. But we got the contents, so. What about Carl's idea of doing a test pattern write and a test pattern read? Okay, or just choose a random address and choose that you can write all ones, all zeros, and all ones should work, and all zeros we should get the bit better stuff. Okay, so load preset into S1, and then I'll do a read. Yeah, so we were all right. so now let's try to write all zeros and all should work except bit 15. Reset. Reset. 
correct. Mm -hmm. So and then we get bit 15 and then the parity bit got... Why, why did the parity bit get set? Because it is attempting to write all zeros, which has a one ah, parity. So it, it set it automatically. Yep. So read and write seems to be working, at least on that address. Mm -hmm. Cool. OK, so now the big deal is to get around our, uh, our bit <laughs> that's not working. Next step. So now comes the part where we uh, rewire, uh, rewire around our memory bit error. So this computer has an extra bit of memory for parity and we are going to swap it in for and disconnect our non-working bit use the parity bit instead of it and there's a few wires to remove inhibit sense <coughs> remove the other sense so that would disconnect our parity bit and then we'll fool the computer into thinking the parity bit is the bit that's missing is bit 16 parity is actually bit 15 and the last bit is bit 16, go figure. Well, we have done a lot of work under the binocular on this computer, man. Well, the beauty of wire wrapping is you can unwrap it very cleanly. Okay, that should come up. Nicely unwrapped. And that is the new inhibit. So instead of going to bit 16, it's going to go to bit 15. I feel like I'm working on a Swiss watch or something. <laughs> I have now four new wires, new load resistor, two sense wire, and an inhibit wire, all rewired to the new memory configuration. That's it, last, uh, last wire. We should have one very famous person coming now. And here he is, oh, the real Scott Manley. That's how me. Hello, how are you? <laughs> I'm doing fine. We're all hidden downstairs. You're all hidden downstairs. Yeah. I didn't want to yeah, my, my house is in shambles. Your house is in shambles. Oh, wow. It's a nice place. It used to be. It used to be. <laughs> it's going to be. It's going to be again. This is a serious reconstruction, but this is nothing compared to what you've got going on downstairs. Huh? Exactly. <laughs> So you come at the right moment, we're about to power it up and that's our last repair. Wow. Great. Some works. So I'm gonna start a The whole mocker is looking at yeah. us. We spent basically the two weeks trying to repair the thing. And then we are going to power it up and for the first time it should read its own memory. Yeah. Good, we had a I think we had so we had lot of mem mm, lots of faults in the memory I've system. I've heard. I've been watching. Oh, uh, just missed it. So, rewind. We parted it up. <laughs> we didn't blow anything. We didn't 
I have a short circuit, and Mike is trying to first read to the memory. Yep, so I, I wrote one, two, three, four, five into a location and read it back, which means we got a zero in, so the inhibit line worked, right? Uh huh, uh -huh. so we repair. Can you do uh, so, uh, all, all ones except the last, uh, last parity bit? Uh, except the I, parity bit? I, I can't control okay. the parity it generates, but I can write all ones in. So Go for it. Okay, so you wrote right. it all with one. Mm -hmm. You should read it back. Looks like we're getting the right answer. Oh, we have all the right bit toggling. Can you write yeah. zero? Can you write a zero? Let's write it completely with zeros. So, load preset, read preset. Okay. So we've repaired it. I think so. Looks like we did. So fire up. Repair it. So so. <laughs> Running on its or core memory, the original core memory, original, original core memory. Or, or we want to run the bad bits. So, can can you try to run something on it? Should I just press go and let yeah, see if yeah. it? Okay, here we go. It hasn't changed. Okay, here it goes. Two point uh, two seven. Oh, it's yeah. running. Yeah, we got oh, it. Oh, on on its on its own memory. Yeah, on its own memory. That's okay. So, that yeah. We have almost landed. For us, it's the yeah. equivalent of the moon landing. So, verb 21, now 27. Enter. 10, enter. Okay. <coughs> so, we're coming up on the erasable memory sweep where I'll write to every location and read back and see if that works. Oh. And if it doesn't, we'll get a program alarm. Oh, is you a self-testing memory? Yep. How long does that take? Uh, the full test is just a couple minutes oh, or so. Okay. This, the second register will become a one after it completes the oh. erasable test. Oh, okay. What, what is the right to the memory in a test? Good question. I don't know. It's not dead beef because this is an awful right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It, it might just be the address. I'm not sure how clever they were. Ah, oh, it looks like it passed. Good. Hey! Yes. yes! All right. All right. Before we uh, put the mem erasable memory module back to use, we dumped its content because it's core memory, ferrite base. It keeps everything for ever, <laughs> many years. And Mike was able to figure out what was in memory at the time this thing was powered off and what it last did, its last, its last words. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so this is all the data that was stored in the memory. Uh huh. And uh, there are certain signatures in AGC memory that we can use to identify uh, what program was running in it. Mm -hmm. One of the big ones is um, the display table, uh, mm -hmm. DSP tab, which contains the, all of the, the relay settings for the DSP display. Right. Uh, I need to zoom out again. <laughs> Sorry, yeah, I'm, I'm just doing a very poor camera job. I wasn't sure what we were going to show. Yep. So uh, it, it, it holds all of the settings for the, the disky relays so that as the display updates, it knows only to update the things that have changed. Mm -hmm. And so we can scan through the uh, memory and find that, that's a, a That's a video RAM. Yeah. Except yeah. It, it's, 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 it's <laughs> right. permanent video RAM. Yep. And uh, since there's only certain disky relay settings that are valid, we can mm -hmm. scan through the memory and find valid display tables. Ooh. Uh, and so I, I have a script here. Um, and if I run it, I think this should work. Yeah, so this is, this is a list of valid display tables mm -hmm. that it has found. Uh, and what's interesting about this is that address 307 mm -hmm. is a known display table for the program Aurora, yeah, the Lunar Module System Test Program, which is what, what okay. this AGC should have had. So oh, that, okay. that's a good sign. Uh -huh. And if I go to that address in the dump, uh, it looks like it has a lot of data in it. Uh -huh. So I extracted that out uh, and modified the monitor to display what is in that table. And when it comes up, yes, okay. So that is really the last word of the AGC before it was scrapped. This is the last screen mm -hmm. it had on display. Yep. So you're doing a 
Computer archaeology or necrology, I don't know. <laughs> so verb 41 here is a course alignment of the IMU. And noun 22 are the, is the new IMU angles. Mm -hmm. uh, so they were setting their, their angles to 0, 0, 90, 90 degrees. Pointing up. Yep. Right. And that seems to have taken them through a gimbal lock. Oh! Seemingly. <laughs> 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 or maybe the gimbal lock is why they were doing the alignment. Uh-huh. Um, but yeah, this, this was the last thing that uh, was on the display when it was shut off. Right. And you had even one more interesting piece of data that you, you found out there. You could find actually where the freaking thing was. Right. So uh, when you do gyro compassing with the IMU, you need to know what your latitude is and which direction you're pointing. Gyro compassing being one method for initializing the gyro. Right, exactly. When you are on Earth with the gravity. Yep. Right. And you have to tell it where on Earth you are about. Yep. And so that. And so that and so that that location is was in the in in the in the erasable core memory. Uh, yes. So that location uh, has uh, valid data in it. It turns out that the the latitude is basically exactly Johnson Space Center, the Manned Space Flight Center. Okay. But unfortunately, we only have, because they only use single precision for their latitude setting, oh, we only okay. have like plus or minus 0 0.02 degrees of latitude. Okay. And it turns out that just kind of covers Johnson Space Center. <laughs> <laughs> the latitude uh, stored in the AGC was, was 29.55 degrees. So you say, what, what's the latitude here? Uh, twenty nine point five five degrees, and that's what the AGC had. Yep. Yeah. So somewhere, somewhere in here, is where the AGC was. So, so somewhere in the Houston yeah. Manned Man Space Center. That's about all the accuracy we can get, and we don't have longitude because you don't need that for gyro compassing. Well, yeah, but it was it wasn't in Russia. Right. Yeah. <laughs> it, it was exactly where we, we you know would expect it to be. No, uh, reflecting on this, uh, we have accomplished. All what almost all what we have set up to do, right? Yeah. Was, yeah. We have basically everything in the computer working, which is yeah. Cool. Well, that's the one working AGC in the world. Mm -hmm. oh. nice. <laughs> I, I look forward to sleeping a bit. Yeah, me too. <laughs> going back to work is going to feel like being on vacation. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, well done, guys. And man, what a piece of hardware that is. We landed, guys. We did. Yeah. <laughs> this is why NASA doesn't want to support us. <laughs> Bunch of idiots having fun with an AG. <laughs>